Hi, I'm Mark Whitaker with the Legislative Analyst Office, and in this webcast, I'll be discussing our new report entitled Improving State Oversight of Academic Expansions. In November, we launched a series looking at some key issues facing higher education in California in conjunction with the 50th anniversary of California's Master Plan. This report examines the, examines the first issue in our series by focusing on the process for establishing and approving new academic programs in schools at the University of California and California State University. To provide some background, the state's public higher education segments periodically create new, deg new degree programs, such as new bachelor's degree or master degree programs or new PhD programs, and also open new schools, such as schools of medicine, law, or public policy. Both UC and CSU have internal procedures for reviewing and authorizing new programs in schools. While state law assigns the state's oversight of proposals to the California Post-Secondary Education Commission, CPEC's role is to ensure that each proposal for a new program or school addresses student needs, avoids duplication, and serves state's interests. Their role, however, is only advisory. For example, in 2007, CPEC found that a new law school proposed for UC Irvine was unnecessary and recommended against opening the school, yet UC Irvine opened the law school this fall despite CPEC's objections. This was the first instance that we were aware of in which a university opened a new school without CPEC's approval and prompted us to look into the effectiveness of the state's approval process for new programs and schools in the public university systems. So in this report, we examine a number of new programs and schools that have been approved in the last few years to determine how effective the approval process is at preventing programs that are unnecessary or not a priority. In looking at the proposals, we evaluated them to see how well they addressed state interests based on three criteria. First, we looked to see if the proposed school or program was aligned with, state, with the state's academic and workforce needs. Next, we looked at how the proposal fit within higher education spending priorities and the state's overall spending priorities, with particular focus on how the proposed programs compared with existing programs or other new programs that could benefit from the state's limited resources. And lastly, we analyzed whether the proposed program was cost-effective or if there were more efficient ways to meet, to meet the state's needs and priorities at a lower cost. Our review found that some approved schools and programs did not meet these minimum criteria. For example, we found that the UC Irvine Law School did not meet any of the three criteria. There was not a demonstrated shortage of lawyers in the state that required a new law school. The state, in our view, had higher spending priorities within higher education and the state budget as a whole and there were more cost-effective approaches for training more lawyers, such as increasing enrollment at existing law schools. We found other programs that didn't meet one or two of the criteria. For example, the proposed medical school at UC Riverside addresses some apparent shortages in health care, which the legislature has indicated are clearly state priorities. However, even though UC Riverside's proposal does attempt to limit some costs by not including the university hospital, we question if there are additional ways to reduce the costs of the new medical school, or if a new medical school is even the most cost-effective way to meet the state's shortages. Even UC's internal planning documents found that increasing enrollment at existing medical schools should be, be a priority before opening a new medical school. The fact that our review found proposals that did not meet the three basic criteria of needs, priorities, and cost-effectiveness suggests some problems with the current process for approving new schools and programs. Our review found that the approval process lacks sufficient coordination and data and does not adequ adequately consider priorities and policy alternatives. Most policy decisions are made at the campus level so that the type, scope, and size of programs are often driven by the desire of institutions to achieve comparability with other campuses in the system rather than by considerations of need or cost effectiveness. To address some of these problems, the report includes a number of recommendations for reforming the approval process. Some of the major recommendations include earlier input in the approval process from CPEC and the legislature, earlier input from other stakeholders with interests beyond those of the campus and the universities could result in better, more cost-effective proposals. Another re recommendation is that the state periodically measure supply and demand in major fields to provide a framework for planning new programs and to signal to the universities which programs should be developed. We also recommend some changes to CPEC's review process so that the review focuses almost exclusively on larger programs and emphasizes state need and cost effectiveness. This would give CPEC's review a narrower, more defined scope and reduce some of the duplication with other reviews that take place at the university and the higher education accrediting agencies. 
We also recommend that CPEC's approval be made more meaningful and carry more weight. Lastly, we recommend increased oversight from the legislature through such mechanisms as requiring legislative approval for larger proposals or having separate budget items for new schools and programs. Each new program or school has both budget and policy implications, and the legislature can play a key role in setting policy and spending priorities. Taken together, we believe that these recommendations will result in new programs and schools that are cost-effective and better reflect the state's interest. We would also encourage the legislature and CPEC and the university systems to scrutinize proposals for new schools and hold them to high standards and criteria in order to guard against the proliferation of unnecessary or costly programs. That concludes our webcast on the report Improving State Oversight of Academic Expansions, but I encourage you to check out the full report on our website. Also, watch for additional reports from our Higher Education Master Plan series in the coming months. Thank you for your time.